So in this episode of The New Strategist, we answer the question, how do you recover your sleep schedule after sickness? Um, how's it been going, Ashton? You're back on deck uh, after your little holiday? Yeah, I'm feeling really refreshed. Had a great holiday and I'm coming to Melbourne. The weather seems to be nice, sunny and bright. Definitely make me feel better. Yeah, How about good, you, Alex? Uh, while you were away, I got sick. Um, unfortunately, must have been missing you. Uh, the whole week <laughs> I was out, a bit of a cough and a cold. Um, it was really challenging. And I think part of it was um, uh, work, work stress. And then part of it was the kids were sick at home as well. Um, so now I've got that struggle, which is to get back onto that, that schedule that I had before, which was really good. And, um, you know, we, we usually talk about this, this element of managing your night to master your day. Yeah. Um, that night management for me is, uh, it's, it went out of the window during the, during the sickness and then after yeah. that sickness as well. Yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing. Um, like you can, it's almost like getting off the wagon, right? Like you, you get into this routine, keep doing things, but something changes and then it's very hard to get back on it. Yeah. 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 So, um, it was, I think it was a bit of a cold. Um, and when I say a bit of a cold, I guess the older you get, the more, uh, hard hitting colds are getting, or maybe here in, in Australia, the, the colds are getting worse and they really knock you out and. Uh, clearly workplace productivity was tanking and I was like, oh, should I stay at home? And, and by stay at home, it's just, I mean, I mean, I'm working from home. Yeah. So it's a, should I log off now? And it took a little bit of encouragement from your team to help me get, <laughs> stop working and start resting. Um, but yes, I was coughing a lot and it was, it was terrible. It was just a, a case of waking up constantly during the night as well as having my little one waking me up. And then, um, I think a lot of what happened during and after the illness was simply demotivation. It's like, yeah. um, before illness, you know, waking up, getting some sunlight, um, uh, you know, having a good breakfast, doing a little bit, bit of exercise and putting in place that 30, 30, 30 or 20, 20, 20 sort of approach. And that all disappeared. So now, one week after that, um, I pretty much wake up and lay there in bed for a while on my phone until it's ready to have breakfast, until I'm ready to have breakfast. Yeah. And um, I'm just really struggling now. So I thought this might be a good time to get your take on why, how, why is sleep so important when it comes to this recovery process? So, yeah, definitely. I think sleep sleep's quite important for you to just re, um, get the energy back as well and also to maintain mm. the immunity i think sleep's one of the things that they uh, people don't really consider a tool in that immune defense you can ha have all your um you can keep wearing your mask you can keep uh, having mm. the supplements but i think with the sleep sleep helps with the immune defense by um doing all the cellular repairs as we have talked in the past but also production of cytokines which is mm. that innate immune defense so the first line of immune defense in the body uh, you need that production of cells which happens during the sleep i guess yeah. when you don't have enough sleep uh then the problem is you, you lose that immune defense the strength of that immune defense a bit um and i feel like someone like you who does a pretty difficult job during the daytime, a lot stressful and that mm. stress response don't help with that immune defense as well, because more you stress, more epinephrine release, um, like your inf inflammatory cells goes up and that impacts your immunity as well. Mm. Um, yeah. so that's, I think the main issue there. And if you have solid, like seven to nine hours of sleep, that at least your body will keep trying to do your do it best by producing these immune cells maintaining uh, all the cells like all the maintenance works done and also it impacts with the um like the stress responses in the body um keeping the inflammation down so they can when there's a infection coming in you can fight it better oh yeah 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 so 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I was taking the vitamin pills. Yeah. Um, but I guess it's that balance of you, you need you, the, the sleep component, um, you know, workplace stress. I mean, that's something else you need to handle separately. Yeah. The, 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 your nutrition is important as well. So it's that balance of all of the above. But I guess um, for all of us, there's going to be a period of time when work is busy. Yeah. And yeah. that's un unavoidable. So yeah, you're right. So I think best we can do have that holistic approach to immune immune defense. So yeah, we can't really change work stress is a bit out of our control, mm. but we have to deal with unfortunately that's a I guess a way of working, right? Uh, the next best thing we can do supplements definitely play a role. There's I think enough evidence to say certain supplements will mm. uh, play a critical role, um, <clears throat> and incorporating that supplements and then good amount of sleep will definitely yeah, help yeah. fight better in the immune um, infection. So uh, what kind of supplements did you have, Alex? What's your go-to? Oh, uh, was these NSC 1000 yeah. milligram vitamin C. Yeah. Effervescent drink mix. Yeah. 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 Um, vitamin C is probably the most common mm -hmm. one that people use for especially for immune reasons and there's mm. enough evidence to say it can protect you against infections but at the same time reduce the uh, severity of cold and other infections as well yeah, yeah. Um, only thing sometimes if you if you don't have the, the absorption levels could be a bit different or if you don't have it like food for an example sometimes mm. it may not be absorbed as fast or uh, as it should be um and the other thing vitamin d is usually left behind when people talk about uh immunity they usually like all right i have vitamin c i'm, I'm good yeah, but yeah there's enough evidence there's a lot of publications suggesting vitamin d particularly around covid19 as well yeah, um, if yeah. we keep having uh higher doses of vitamin d that reduces the severity of the infection mm. or cut down how um how long this infection is going for yeah. um so that that's another tool i think you can use either onset uh, when you're getting sick just a bit of supplementary uh, yeah. vitamin d is it too late uh, once you're sick it's, it's it, usually with yeah. me like as soon as we get i'm sick or someone in the household is sick oh, it's like take the vitamins is it too late yeah. once you're already sick so um i was reading some uh papers today and they were all suggesting if you have it while you're sick there's still uh evidence mm -hmm. suggests that it will cut down the severity of the sickness so uh it may not it may be a bit too late to prevent you from getting mm -hmm. sick if it's let's say someone in the family got sick but yeah, it will definitely yeah. help with the severity or the or uh, the duration of the illness so i don't think it's a bad idea to have it while um, when you're sick you can still probably help the body to fight better okay all right and and just a, a standard multivitamin i think most people take a vitamin c is is the general go-to that's sufficient um th yeah if you, if you have usually um i guess our st st stands on uh, vitamins in this podcast mm. is don't you don't use it if you don't need it right mm. uh if you're if you're trying to recover yeah general vitamin like a multivitamin would be helpful for you to in the recovery process um otherwise if you're just worried that if you're worried about getting being sick um probably thousand milligrams of vitamin c and maybe just uh, your stock standard vitamin d supplement mm -hmm. with yeah. a bit of zinc usually i think vitamin c supplements do have zinc uh zinc uh is supposed to help with the immunity as well yeah yeah um so i guess those three probably the best in terms mm -hmm. of in immunity and recovery okay um, All right. and with sleep yeah okay so as part of my recovery sort of routine I, I, I I'm I take my vitamins um, what else should I do to help uh, s speed up my recovery um, if there's a strong chance you had some sort of viral infection and viral mm -hmm. infections are especially after that the recovery process there's always fatigue so your energy levels as a 
will be lower um so it will be very hard for you to do things that requires a lot of mental uh energy or the will power because your your body is in that recovery mm-hmm. process um so standard like um have balanced meals like with ideal pro- high protein so it will help with the body's recovery process um and because you now need to figure out way to have that energy boost the yeah. our go to way of increasing energy like morning sunlight will probably mm. help with that yeah. and morning sunlight has ha- a safer uv radiation which will help with the vitamin d production as well okay that's true yeah. um yeah. and there's a newer field coming up called photoimmunity so it's it's about the the light and light stroll in the immunity um and they're suggesting there are other benefits to the body not just the vitamin d synthesis from uh, sunlight yeah. but lower doses of sun exposure will still benefit in overall immune health so yeah. it's it can be a, a stronger tool and especially now it's sunnier and warmer yeah. it's probably yeah. easier way to go and get some bright sunlight in the morning um you do have to be a bit kind to yourself i think um mm. recovery process is hard so you probably have to um slow down and let the body do it natural yeah. job but i guess uh it can you, you can aid it in a way if balance meals just uh get the vitamins in yeah yeah a bit of sunlight yeah okay so and hyd- hydration i guess most important hydration yeah yeah okay hydration vitamins sunlight in the morning yeah and good old fashioned sleep as much as possible good. absolutely absolutely i think it doesn't mm. hurt for you to sleep longer now because your body is in the recovery process um mm. which will aid in that recovery okay i read somewhere that um you shouldn't that someone was saying you shouldn't have um you should try and avoid napping so you don't eat into your actual bedtime and, and while you're sick or recovering from sickness you yeah uh, those afternoon dips that we've talked about in the past are even more exacerbated like like you really sure. feel like wow i really need to lie down now and, and yeah. that's partly it's it's i would have gone back to work too quickly and i would yeah. still be pretty sick and so it's like our oh, afternoon is is doubly tiring during that period of time so so the uh, nap is napping is one of those things that have divided the sleep community some mm. are completely against it saying uh, exactly the reason you said it will impact your night's sleep and then some uh, some portion like all right you do it it will help with the energy it will help with the recovery um for us i feel like if you sleep between if you have a nap between that middle portion of the day uh, 12 mm. to 3 ish you already it, it it makes sense from that circadian rhythm point of view because your energy is dipping you're naturally feeling a bit sleepier um, yeah. especially now you're recovering from a sickness your body yeah, can yeah. use sleep um and then it will help with that mm. ho- ideally it will speed up your uh, recovery process um but the problem is if you are someone that have trouble falling asleep bit of insomnia symptoms if you um try to have a nap too late in the day you might it might uh, impact that um uh, the drive to sleep because mm. when you sleep that drive like yeah slows down a bit okay yeah 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 now usually i i do it late afternoon yeah mid late afternoon is still the 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 time frame yeah but um yeah it's it's uh, it's interesting like thinking about the energy levels cuz before i was sick um you know i was doing this ship 30 for 30 digital writing course every single day I was writing yeah. and publishing on Twitter and that took a, a lot of energy to to do that and then straight after that as, as work went up my writing went down I tried to maintain it but as I got sick I, I was every other I guess some ex, extracurricular kind of hobby that I had totally fell off and I was like I just I had I I the only motivation I had was to lie in bed and watch a movie. Hmm. And yeah. that was like the bed. That was the, that was the max max that I could actually do. 
anything yeah. else like even any of my other hobbies or reading a book so you know i like to, to read my books and yeah. everything fell off it was just um um uh, zero motivation for all of that or zero energy and, and and i did try and pick up a bit of some coke from here and there some 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 energy drinks and that gives you a spike but it was so short yeah. it was like half an hour you, mm. you your baseline was low so it wasn't, wasn't like you were feeling good and it will make you feel great you yeah felt rubbish and it just felt make you felt feel normal for a little bit and then it just trailed off yeah. again so it was yeah. like really interesting to see that but um it makes you appreciate um wellness again um yeah. once you've been sick i think everyone whenever if you got the flu or a cold you always feel like rubbish and it's like oh yeah you better better make use of the the energy you've got when you are well mm. yeah absolutely and it, it's an interesting point about the energy drinks with i think while you're recovery or in when you're sick um energy drinks will kind of you feel like you get a bit of energy but then because they're mm. so um they get rid of the fluids in the body that are uretics and you mm. you will be a bit more dehydrated as well yeah so yeah. you might actually end up feeling worse after that spike because yeah, you yeah. probably don't have enough fluids in the body now yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that's quite interesting cool i know that, that's a good good collection there so and, and some good advice for me to to like maintaining the sleep is i do the best i can but yes my 7 year old is uh, adept at destroying the continuity or the the consistency of sleep i can't yeah. do that much about that uh, take the vitamins get some sunshine in the morning and, and yes it's uh, it's just spring in melbourne here so beautiful weather outside and grand final day today um you know i took the kids out to the park with the dog and, and it was just great to be outdoors so that the sun's out so it's it's good timing for that yeah um uh what else was there that you mentioned yeah the um supplementation good amount yeah. of um sleep uh and then the morning sunlight now just to get that vitamin D production and also some other benefits from the sunlight in your body yeah yeah i i think the only other missing thing that i was thinking this morning when i was doing my the only habit that's that i've had remain for the last 5 years um from a habit stacking perspective it just reminded me uh, I need to kick start my habit stack again because mm -hmm. in that period of of low motivation even your habits tend to to go out the window so um it just reminded me that uh, the role you know that that you play for me in terms of reminding me of certain things and for anyone else the role that their friends or family mm -hmm. or partner play or should play when it comes to helping you maintain those healthy habits is is really important yeah. um and you know at work we've been talking a lot about preventative health and it's it's interesting i've been learning a lot about um the role of family when it comes to discussions around supporting each other's health so um with my uh my 7 year old i continually telling him about you know <laughs> my headache is yeah. um caused by you interrupting me in the middle of the night again and again um and then i get cranky and then he gets cranky so so it's, for us in the family it's, it's 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 trying to educate each other and yeah. educate the little ones and and make sure that they're aware and hopefully they can develop some good habits along the way hmm. yeah absolutely it definitely need that community support as so whether it's mm. family whether it's work the friends yeah yeah hope you get better cool all right so i i think for anyone in our audience watching that have been sick lately or feel something coming on and and you know while i i think yeah here in australia covid numbers are still are still there and uh, my brother got it um he travels internationally quite a bit so yeah. he finds that it's always on the airplane or the airport yeah. that he gets it and his body's stronger these days in terms of he'll he'll be he'll be positive but um 
um, he's not feeling it as much as he used to. Yeah. But um, yeah, we're still living with COVID in the community. Um, word on the street is that the flu is is much stronger here in Australia. And of course, the last two years when we've been, at least here in Melbourne, hiding in our houses, um, I think uh, the immunity has probably gone down a little bit. So yeah, absolutely. Um, not everyone does, but I 70% of the time still wear a mask on the bus. Uh, mainly in the e mainly on the way on the way home not so much in the morning because for a lot of the morning i guess workers professional workers they're probably not wearing it at all but i'm mm. still a bit worried i still got sick though but um yeah um it's still a little bit of concern i think yeah and it's a good habit i think the mask wearing mm. to keep going especially now with the spring the allergy season's in um you can probably get a bit of um support on avoiding the pollen and other allergens as well now that's a good point and that, that's one of the reasons why i have been wearing it in the morning in the city when i get to the city yeah it's just i don't have chronic hay fever but i used to and yeah. you know it's it's a terrible thing to be walking around at work blowing your nose constantly you get all red yeah. just dribbling away um feeling all clogged up so yeah definitely any any way to avoid uh hay fever or anything else going up my nose then is helpful yeah mm. yep cool any final words for our audience uh to help them on their road to recovery just like um how we say um always just get the basics right so mm. i know it will be hard um if you have respiratory illness having that good um, long sleep um, mm. but make sure that yeah, whether you steam inhalation or something to get your res uh, upper respiratory system cleared up uh, mm. and then try to sleep as much as possible it will help with your recovery keep your fluids up uh, mm. and have some supplementation to kind of boost your recovery as well cool good advice so thanks for that um, uh Feel free to continue to like and subscribe. I know we've been a little bit quiet recently. I've got some some exciting, um, uh, an exciting digital course on its way with regards to sleep and helping educate others with, with regards to um, the right habits and understanding what's required and and the the how what what why um, the why how what when it comes to sleep. So stay tuned and uh, you'll be hearing more from us shortly. All right, so thanks a lot and see you later.